Okay, so if 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 you look at the situation today, yeah. we have depression and anxiety being yes. diagnosed on a high, higher percentage proportion than ever before. I mean, we could say that there is an epidemic of existential yes. dread. Yep. And I'm not religious whatsoever, but you could argue that people who have comfort or faith or a, a relationship with their prescription of the divine, whether it's yes. Catholicism or Judaism or Islam, have a little bit less existential dread because they believed the story. Uh -huh. um, and that as we've be entered a sort of secular age on the one hand, and as we've entered an age of uh, so such excited to respond to this, keep going. such global, so many cultures mixing together, everybody's little filter bubble feels under threat by the other. Yeah. Ernest Becker's terror management theory idea is that when you're reminded of your mortality, even by somebody who believes a different philosophy than yours, that's deemed a mortal threat. Okay. That puts a crack in your facade and your immortality project and your symbolic reality and your necessary illusion. Okay. So everybody's necessary, necessary illusion is being assaulted from every end. We're living in a divisive time in our mm -hmm. history, economic uncertainty, the jobs are being taken away by robots, the politics are being hijacked by populist fear mongers, okay. anxiety and depression, people are popping Xanaxes to deal with the mortal coil, which goes back down to the existential question, who the fuck are we, why are we here, what's it all about? The only answer I've ever found is you know, Albert Camus lived life to the point of tears. Uh -huh. Beautiful grace. Yeah. I love movies because beautiful films touch me, move me, yeah. give me the chills, make me cry, and then I feel better. I feel <laughs> existentially reassured by something beautiful. Aesthetic arrest is my religion, okay? The orgasm of cognitive ecstasy, yeah. right? Carl Sagan, ecstasy, there's an under understanding is a kind of ecstasy. Right? Contemplative introspection, gasping the cosmos, curled up with a beautiful girl, listening to maybe Packle Bell's Canon or Rachmaninoff. <laughs> That's such a cliche. <laughs> maybe, but I like that song. But my point being, sometimes a cliche is a cliche because it's true. But my question is, um, in your book, Stealing Fire, you're offering a set of techniques yeah. to help people fix their self systems to operate without this dread. But another thing that you talk about or you've talked about is that it has less to do with the story. We're all looking for absolution. I'm gonna sit in a therapist chair or I'm gonna take you know LSD and figure out that I'm an immortal being and then I'm gonna feel great. Yeah. You're saying the story. Yeah. Let's fix the, let's deal, treat the mind as a user, inter user interface. Let's worry about embodied yeah. cognition and sure. in like, techniques and technologies that address the, I guess, the neurobiology of being yeah. and that that somehow gets us to where we want to be. So talk about that in the context of the book and helping people out of their afflictions. Sure. Well, that was a hell of a riff and you Sorry covered two that. really interesting okay. things, which was the philosophical existentialism and the state of current religion. And is religion, regardless of how wooden or creaky some of them may appear to be at this point in time, <laughs> sob and bomb for the aching hub. Right. Right? Yes. So do we want to skip over that and do this thing or do we want to touch on those? Touch on those. Okay. Everything. So, so, so <laughs> what we're probably seeing right these days is the collapse and, the, and the, basically the ossification of traditional religious structures, the hisms and the schisms, orthodox code base, conventional, you know, power, you know, often power DDs and code based priest yeah. class, right? Yeah. So, yeah, everybody's tired of that. And, and all the Gallup surveys and all this stuff says, you know, de declining religion and everything but charismatic religions, Pentecostalism, right? Any of the ones that, you know, like, praise the Lord and pass the snakes. People want to have the Holy Ghost feeling, but they don't want to be talked at in church anymore. Right. Right. So, right. Right. And, the, right. and they the, want the, to have their own experience of the divine. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Direct and, and less mediated, yes. the better. Now, the yes. question is, is what does a post conventional religious movement look like? And what we would propose is, again, no more sky gods, no more happily ever after, you know, and everything works out if you just do do the things you're supposed to do yeah. um, it's more like what we what I would suggest yes is that we you know in fact I'll, I'll set this up in one sec which is like Yates had that has that great saying speaking okay. of contemporary religions because the old ones like they're losing power yes right the world is moving on past that moment in time yes. in history yes and you're getting fundamentalist backlash you're getting these nasty ass final grabs it's like Gandalf yes. in the in the fucking caves of Moria yes. and yes. that Balrog he defeats it and then at the last minute his tail whips right. up and grabs him and snags him down into the abyss mm -hmm. that is what we're seeing with fundamentalism of every stripe we're seeing it with ISIS and fundamentalist Islam. We're seeing it with Christian Zionism, looking to arm Israel to the teeth, even though they have no care and concern for the Jewish people. Okay. We're seeing it with Bannon in the fourth turning. Let's just okay. drive this fucker off the cliff because okay. we will rule in the rough in the okay. Okay. Right? And you're even seeing it in the singularity, the tech nodes. Yes. Right? Everybody's saying this the pain of this world is such that I cannot accept and acknowledge it. Therefore, let's blow it all up because it's happy days on the other side. Yes. I hope. Right. 
right? We, we don't like that. And that's that. wildly problematic, at least yes. from where I sit. I, I, have, I have a life and a wife and kids right. that matter. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm a hero. And I nice. have, like, you know, a wife I haven't met yet yeah. that I want to enjoy the honeymoon phase with her. <laughs> I don't exactly. want the world to go to hell. Yeah. Exactly. So the question is, 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 is Yates said it, right? He said, the best lack all conviction while the worst are filled with a passionate intensity. Oof. So, right? So, so how are so many smart, considered, thoughtful, caring people getting overwhelmed? Like, how did the fucking wing nuts hijack mm. the mic? Mm. And why are they mm. getting the last word on how this all goes down? Mm. So, what is possible with a post-conventional spirituality, a post-conventional religious experience? It's because the trouble is, like, the best who lack all conviction, we're agnostics. We're like, hey, man, there's a lot of different perspectives. It's not on me to tell you what to think. It's all complicated. Right. The it agnostic depends. gnosticism, yes, right? So the people who have had transcended vistas and glimpses of what might be, but don't have the conviction to well, try well, to sell no, that, it to that's, us. So, straight up agnosticism, that's yeah. where most of us are. But what yeah. we would suggest would be the post-conventional move for a contemporary spirituality that fits right okay and fits this developmental moment in culture and consciousness is an agnostic Gnosticism which is Zora Neale Hurston said you got to go there to know there so go there and that's the Gnostic experience that is the direct experience of the divine and the ineffable yeah. once you've done that but you've done it in a contemporary format you don't come down with your hair on fire saying I'm going to be the new guru or cult leader because there's 10,000 there's 10 million other people who have done the same goddamn thing <laughs> and we're writing about it and we're talking about it and we're sharing it it's why Tony Robbins sucked so badly on the TED stage because Tony is used to having an audience of sycophants of 40,000 mm. in his stadiums and when he showed up among a community of his peers and tried to ape the same shit, it bombed horribly. Shiva Ray, bless her cotton socks, showed up okay. at Burning Man and her, her TED Talk. She tried to do the same fucking thing. And it's like, you know what, honey? Everybody's a goddess at Burning Man. <laughs> So Stop there's there's le there's there, there's less yes. room for the person that pretends to have the answer, the Messiah yes. idea. It so disempowers the demagogue and it re-empowers everybody's lived experience. And now we're crowdsourcing epiphany. We are crowdsourcing revelation. There's a DMT wow. hyperspace lexicon where 10,000 people write their experiences and they are having the furthest out hair-raising experiences and then they bracket it. They've got a hyperspace lexicon yeah. of yeah. all the experiences in hyperspace, yeah. the experience yeah. in DMT experience, and yeah. they're like... They're mapping well, the territory. Yeah. When you experience an underlying experience, it's as if the entire... Alpha and Omega right. happening may not be true at all. Right, but that's might what it seem feels like. as if, yeah. and that that conditional nature yeah. of yeah. revelatory experience in this yeah. day and age—that's news. Because it yeah. used to be one dude, one time. Right. Trust Some, me. Uh, yeah, exactly. He was on the top of the mountain. He saw the burning bush. He's making all the claims, and we got to listen.